<laughs> ah, good morning, guys. Vanessa Galindo, good to see you in here. Dan, Dan Ray, good to see you in here. KNF Financial, Kim Spire, Jets fan, Blue Lips, what's going on, Blue Lips? No BN, good to see you guys. Um, happy, happy Thursday. Uh, throwback Thursday, you know, it's it's whatever Thursday. How you feeling? How you feeling, bro? Hey, Kim, thanks so much. I appreciate that. How you feeling, Jets fan? How you feeling, bro? Um, what's going on in D.C. this weekend? Dane Ray, I have no idea, my friend. I have no idea. Um, Morgan, uh, Conqueror Fit, good to see you in here. Good morning, guys. Good morning, uh, Phoebe. Um, I use your advice about complaining. Did you? That's awesome, Jets fan. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. Thank you. Great rising. Great rising. Thanks, Lo. Um, great rising, E. Nicole. Thanks for inviting your friends and followers. Uh, look, as people start coming in, do me a huge favor. If you like the things that I say, if you like the things that I share, do me a huge favor and invite your friends and followers. It is raining in D.C. right now. Um, let's get people into the scope so that we can talk about some things, talk about some mindset things. Um, I, had a, I had a wonderful uh, uh, evening last night. Um, it's kind of like a group dinner thing with a bunch of business owners and like on a different level. Like I can't even tell you half the people. I can't tell you the names of half the people, but um, there's phenomenal, phenomenal people. And I want, to, I want to share something about the mindset of the rich and the poor. And I do that. I study this every single time I spend time with people. Um, you can just hear it within the first couple minutes of discussion. And, and if you're not careful, if your mind is not where it needs to be, you don't know, you may miss out on an opportunity because you're, you don't have the right mindset, which means you're not ready to, to absorb the opportunity. That makes sense. So this I, had me thinking this morning as I was coming in uh, to the office, I want to share this with you guys uh, before, I, before I go in. And let me, let me be clear. There's a, Keith Maurice. Keith Maurice is in here. Uh, how you feeling? You got, I guess got to check out Keith Maurice. Um, he's right there. He just shared this with you on Twitter. Uh, Keith has a new site called Play for Stuff. If you're into uh, playing scope games, he has Logic Bomb and stuff like that. And um, how you feeling? How you feeling, bro? And so I always say that because that's in honor of Keith Maurice. So that's how he talks sometimes on the scopes. Um, hey, Haitian Phoenix. So yeah, Keith has something called PlayForStuff.com. You can go check it out. Um, you sign up. You can win games and prizes and things. And it's sponsored by. Um, um, has sponsored prizes, so if you you know you collect points and then there's raffle off the points and the winner gets you know whatever the prize is, it can be as much as a hundred dollars. Sometimes it's you know ten dollars, like it's in that range of, of gifts and prizes. So he's like the Black Bob Barker. If you guys are familiar with uh, the Price is Right, the Black Bob Barker, right? Uh, minus all the chicks. So um, yeah, so it's playforself.com. You go check that out. Uh, thank you guys. And so I'm really, I'm really, the reason I, I, I you know, I'm, I'm supporting it is because I'm really excited. I, I was, I saw when he start when he was starting in the middle of trying to do this. And so we talked a few times and, um, I'm really excited for him. So, um, just want to, you know, shout out to him out there. So, Hey, Beth Hoover, good to see you in here. Um, uh, I'm waiting a little bit longer. I want you guys, please, all of you guys to, uh, um, yeah, chicks coming soon. I'm just playing. Yeah, if Jasmine's on here, you ain't gonna say that. Um, I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding. Do me a favor, guys. Please share this with your friends and followers. Uh, you can swipe left or right, swipe up, click the little Perry dude wherever he or she is. Click that thing, and when it comes up, share the broadcast. New to my scope, ma'am in charge. Good to see you. Thank you so much. Namaste for being in here. I appreciate that. Um, let's get enough people in here and do me another huge favor. If you are new in my scope, besides ma uh, ma'am in charge, put a one in the chat box so I know who you are, and then I'm going to tell you who I am, and then I'm going to tell you what we're going to talk about, and I'm going to give you some points. I'm trying to keep this brief as possible. Um, if you are new, do me a favor, put one in the chat box. So I want to just make sure I know uh, who I'm speaking with, uh, so you guys are familiar with my style and who I am. Um, all right, no problem. Thanks so much, Keith. I appreciate I appreciate you saying that. Um, all right, who else is in here? One, Jess Dog. Good to see you, Jess Dog. All right. This is usually a topic that a lot of people aren't as happy about, mainly because they're just not happy about it, because sometimes it calls into question where you are, and it calls yourself into question. Uh, Matt Crane popped in here. I forgot to mention. Thank you for the shout-out, Matt Crane, for inviting friends and followers. I appreciate you always. Um, he's a great business coach in Pulaski, Tennessee, southern part of Tennessee, the border of the Al of Alabama border. Um, doing a great, doing a lot of great things and uh, empowering and enriching people with knowledge and information. So, my name is Abong Eka. I'm a certified public accountant in the Washington, D.C. area. I'm also the author of the best-selling business book, Start Me Up, The No Business Plan, Business Plan. And I'm the founder.
founder of economics. You focus on your mission, your mindset, your money. It's a business consultancy, but it helps you start your you know, your idea and your business, uh, get your, your mission right, your purpose, your mindset, and then the aspects of starting a business from a money perspective. So um, today I want to talk to you about the mindset of, of the poor versus the rich and the difference between the two. Hey, good morning, Nicole. Difference between the poor and the mindset. Hey, Coach Sam, good to see you in here. Thanks for jumping in here, guys. I'm researching your coaching. Thank you so much, Mr. Williams. Um, and uh, thank you for sharing this. I appreciate it. If you guys share it, invite your friends and followers if you jump in here. And so there's a mindset between, there's a difference between the mindset of rich and the poor. We say this all the time. Hey, Stephanie. We say this all the time. We're always like, yeah, there's a mindset, mindset. Last night, I was, I, was, I, was, I was blessed enough to spend time with a bunch of, of beliefs is one of it, yes. I had, I had a great opportunity to spend time with at least 15, 16 different entrepreneurs in various stages. And when I say various stages, all multimillionaires. And uh, more importantly, you know, one of, the, one of the, the fellows I was with, he, you know, this is a six company. I have another guy who does VC stuff now. He exited, uh, he exited a, um, a healthcare uh, company and got that out. Hey, good morning, Pookie. Good morning, everybody. And so th- this is the reason why I'm bringing this up. I'm not bringing this up to impress you or to, you know, try and, you know, get you thinking like I hang out with cool people. That's not, that's not the point. Um, one of the other person is Yannick Silver. You can Google him. I put it, I hashtagged his name in, in the title. Yannick Silver. He's one of the fathers of like internet marketing, one of the fathers of, of video of sales letters, one of the fathers of email marketing. He's been literally in general just uh, one of the pioneers of this. He's a young dude too. Um, I've learned so much about him to the point where I got to know him and he also gave me a recommendation for his book. Have I worked with Grant Cardone? No, I've met him. Um, talked to some of his people. I potentially did. I was going to do some stuff with him, but I've not technically worked with him, but I've done some stuff with him before. Hey, Adrian Dyer, check out Adrian Dyer. She's phenomenal. Thank you so much for being in here, Adrian Dyer. Um, she does a lot of scopes on a body image issues, anorexia, um, Bobo tribe, that kind of stuff. So if you're, you know, her scopes are power empowering. So you should check her out. Um, iron does sharpen iron. So the reason why I'm bringing it up is this. The thing, the deeper thing that people don't realize is if you talk to people with certain mindsets, all of a sudden... You know, someone who's in a poverty mindset, they're thinking about time. The people I've, I spend time with who are doing exponential things are always thinking about value. They're thinking about value. They're not talking about time. They're not talking about how can I, the first thing they think, the first, the first thing is they're not thinking about, oh, I, I, I worked five hours, therefore I should get charged this much. I've been, I, I should charge this much. I've been working for this company for 10 years, therefore I should be at this level. All of it, it's all about value. To them, it's like, how do I take money? Create enough value so that there's an exponential return. Everybody who does something, everybody who builds a business, everybody who, who, who's, who's building something, and they, they, they leverage the idea of value. Time is, is, is a mere function of it, a very minute function of it. And so part of the poverty mindset is I have to trade, I have to trade time for dollars. I don't care if you're a coach. I don't care if you have a company. I don't care what you do. When you're talking about trading time for value, you will suffer. Kevin Madison, you guys gotta check out Kevin Madison. This guy, look at these two, Love and Light. Um, uh, 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 phenomenal, Adrian and, and Kevin. Kevin is uh, my money mentor. I haven't seen him in ages. Um, I keep missing his scopes, but he's phenomenal, phenomenal. He, he launched the Love and Light tour. Um, as you can get the t-shirts as well. Um, you know, I, I was fortunate enough to, to, to help him launch that. And Perry Train, he's phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal guy. He's my money mentor, millionaire mentor. You check him out. Follow, follow, uh, follow Kevin Madison, um, just, uh, to learn different things. And I just, I call him that because, you know, he's balling. So that's why I call him money mentor. But so going back, so the mindset of how you, how you see things, how you trade time for value. A lot of guys, a lot of people in general, they will spend their time. They will spend their time focusing on the time. And I've, I've talked to coaches who charge a thousand dollars, you know, for, for sessions and stuff. And they're all talking about the hour, the hour. And I'm like, the only way you scale is if you start focusing on the value, i.e. the results. Hello, hello, Jasmine. How you feeling? Yes, follow Adrian Dyer. She's phenomenal. Follow Kevin Madison. The second thing is this, I noticed. A lot of people, if you're in a poverty mindset, you're always thinking you have a, you have a, a level of cynicism that becomes toxic. It's a toxic level of cynicism. You're cynical about everything. You're complaining about everything. You're always, you're always like, this person's out to get me. This race is out to get me. My boss is a dick. 
all these things you're talking about instead of focusing on what you can do. The people I met who either have eventually become wealthy, have become successful, who become influential, they always came from a place of servitude. So I'm at this dinner. It's a six-course dinner. There's some charity component to it, but it's a six-course dinner. We're all talking about different things at somebody's house. Another guy who's killing it. Amazing, amazing guy in the financial uh, industry. And we're all this amazing, amazing house in a suburb of D.C., and we're just sitting here talking about all this stuff, talking about life, just explaining things, and phenomenal. It's like different wine tasting, wine pairing. Like It's, it's, it's a different experience, experience I've, I, you know, I've had, 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 had in a long time. And the thing was this. Every single person I interacted with, all they came from was a place of service. All they asked all day long, all night long was, how can I help you? What do you need help doing? Where, what, where, how can I push you up to your next level? What, that's all they came from a place from, a place of servitude, serving, serving, serving. I always meet people. I, the same, every time I talk to someone, I'm always asking them, how can I help you? What can I do to help you? What can I do to push you to another level? Every single time. Thank you so much, Kevin, man. I appreciate that. Right? Courage, humil uh, courage, humility, exactly, exactly. And every single time, every single person, there's a guy I was talking to, sold a couple of his companies worth like, like millions, not like tens of millions, like tens and tens of millions of dollars he's worth. And he's like, how can I help you? What? And it's not, see, but the average of poverty, the person with a poverty mindset thinks it's a zero sum game. They think everything in life is a zero sum game. And they're trying to, they're trying to, they're trying to bring everything into them. It's like, I can't share. I can't give my time. I can't give my energy. Every single, when, it, when, when, when somebody asks them for something, they're thinking, how can I get paid for this? I understand there should be a discussion in your mind about trying to create dollars out of opportunities, but in the same token, it's from a place of servitude. And and when you when you come from a place of servitude, value begins gets an exchange. And at some point in time, that's when you start asking for money. So the person who has a poverty mindset, that's the second. The third part, the person who has a poverty mindset is concerned with Facebook grants. Go on your Facebook today. Take a look at how many people are complaining. How many people are complaining about their life, complaining about their coffee, complaining about their spouse, their friends, their boss, their job. Take a look at how many people are complaining about Paris, right? Who are talking about Paris still. The media, they, they focus on the media. They're watching television, watching CNN, you know, saying, oh my God, it's so terrible. But yet they're taking the time away from their lives. Look how many people are complaining about the Syrian refugees, even though, even though they have a better, bigger chance of dying in a car accident as they drive to their work or, 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 or getting mugged or something. But they're, more, they're concerned about Syrian refugees. I'm not saying it's not important, but you got you, you elected people into your area who make that decision. You don't like it, do the things you're supposed to do, right, to get them out of office. Or you can be among those people who are doing things that they want to do, who are focused on the things that are important, that are focused on um, 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 their goals and their gifts and their dreams and their, mi and their mission, right? At the end of the day, you gotta put your head down and focus and stay on course. So the people I've seen who I've spent time with who are killing it from a, from a, from a mindset perspective, half of them kind of know what's going on loosely, but they're like, yeah, this has happened. This has happened. It's sad, but I can't. I can no longer dwell on it. They've made a decision to say, I'm going to move towards things that I can control. And you got to realize, in life, that is what happens. In life, you got to spend the time to do those kinds of things. In life, you have to do the things that that at some point where the, where the where the majority of people around you are running around with their heads shot off, screaming. You are focused on your mission, on your goal, and you're on course. The difference between the poverty and the wealthy mindset. And the other thing is they're enriching their bodies with information. So you got you to gotta make sure you pull information into your life, information into your body. Look, I'm telling you this for a reason. There are a lot of people who, there are a lot of people who are complaining about stuff. They don't happy, they're not happy where they are. They're not happy with their life. They're not happy with their situation. But then they're not doing it. But it's not painful enough for them to take the, take the initiative to go to that next level. If you're not happy where you are right now, take a look in the mirror and ask yourself a simple question. Am I doing everything I know I can be doing? To get to where I need to go. And I know it sounds like a simple question, but it is a simple question. And you gotta ask yourself that simple question. You gotta ask yourself a simple question. Am I complaining about things that I have the ability to change? Am I complaining about the rain? It's raining right now. Am I complaining about the rain? What the hell can I do about the rain? Get an umbrella, go to work. Plain and simple. Oh, it's snowy. Get a get snowshoes and go to work. That's it. Hey, smart chick. Good to see you. Cynthia, you got to follow Cynthia. She's phenomenal. Another uh, business coach um, doing great things on the West Coast. Um, phenomenal, phenomenal, inspiring stuff. I saw, I caught one of her scopes yesterday. Um, she's doing some great things. So you can follow her and see, and see what she's up to. Um, 
But I'm just trying to, I'm, again, for you guys who are here, hey, Paul Atlanta, I'm trying to remind you guys, very simple, very simple, simple, simple question. Ask yourself, am I putting in the effort I need to put in? Am I focusing on the things I need to focus on? Good morning, Allison. Am I focusing on the things I need to focus on? Do I have a poverty mindset or a wealthy mindset? Am I sitting complaining? Am I on Facebook complaining? Am I complaining about, about Paris, about refugees, about things that I can't change, complaining about my boss, complaining about corporations? Do I have a level of cynicism? Am I cynical about things? When somebody comes to an opportunity to me and someone says, read this book, am I saying that book is not everything? You know how many times I talk to people and I suggest a book to them and they say, well, easier said than this, 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 this you know, poverty mindset. When people start saying, spouting off ridiculous statements like easier said than done. What the hell does that mean? Right? Easier said than done. Uh, they say things like, oh, money won't make you happy. Uh, that's easy for you to say. Oh, that book, it's just a book. It's all ridiculous. The whole thing is you got to pour into yourself on a regular basis. It's like, it's like a garden, man. It's like a garden. You got to make sure you feed the garden. You got to make sure you water the garden. You got to make sure you nurture the garden. You got to make sure you take out all the weeds. If you do not do those things, do not be surprised if your garden is barren. Do not be surprised when you go to harvest and you have no crops. Don't be surprised when the locusts come and eat up all your harvest and your crops and you have nothing to show for it for the effort. So you got to be consistent in what you're doing. You also have to be you have to be deliberate and intentional in how you do different things. So, guys, thanks so much for being in here. Um, this is going to be as quick as possible. I wasn't playing around when I said that. Kathy E. Smith, you got to check out Kathy E. Smith. I know her personally. She's phenomenal. She's based in the Washington, D.C. area. Um, does uh, social media, LinkedIn. Uh, phenomenal, phenomenal. The smart chick, uh, Joey Giggles. You guys are two great people as well. I appreciate you guys as well. Um, Ma'am in charge, thanks so much for being in here. Uh, poet, poet Lena. Look, guys, it's just it's plain and simple. You gotta look at you gotta look at what what level of effort are you putting into what you want. Plain and simple. If you don't like where you are, you gotta change it. Don't like what you're doing, you gotta change it. You're not a tree, right? You're not you're not a plant. You're not a a, a, a building. You can't be moved. You can be moved. And so, it's not easy. But look around you today. Look how many people are working their asses off to make little money, and they think this is what life's supposed to be like. Why? So you can buy a house you can't afford. So you can buy cars you can't afford? Exactly, Kevin. Look at the effort. Look, well, look at what you're doing. Right? People, people, I mean, that's, people spend their whole lives doing this kind of behavior. And then they think when, they, when they're 65, they'll go do what they really love. You know how many people I talk to who talk to you who say that? Right? They literally will spend their whole lives working their whole lives to get to 50 years old or 65 or wherever the hell it is. Retire and say, now I can do what I want. And then they die a year later. Why? Because your brain has been conditioned to working like a dog. So, I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. It's re absolutely, unequivocally ridiculous. And so, if you know that there's something you really want to do, you need to focus on that today, right? And that's basically how I look at it. So, guys, thank you guys for being in here. Hairstyle, hairstylist, MDD, good to see you. I've never used you look new, so thank you for being in here. The hell a rat race. Uh, greater risk is required for big accomplishment. Exactly, exactly. You got to. There has to be a level of risk. Now, the thing is, for me, it, it is risky, but it's not. It's risky not to. It's risky not to take that that step. It's, it's risky not to read that book. It is risky not to to do the things that that are required in order to maybe get that next client. It's, it's risky not to do the things so I can start that business. Um, thank you so much, Adrian. I really appreciate it. Uh, I appreciate that, especially coming from you. You're phenomenal. Um, you have a responsibility while you are on this earth. You have a responsibility to share your gifts. There are people, and it's funny, there's this guy I, I watch on YouTube called, um, um, shoot, so something of mediocrity. I forgot what it's called, but it's phenomenal. He does these, uh, he does these graphics where he draws, basically. He's talking voiceover and he draws. And um, he has a lot of great content. But one of the things he talked about, which was what's resonating, is you know, there are people who are complaining about where they are, right? And they're working so hard. So they can have a million dollars when they retire at 65 years old. But what they don't realize is if someone has offered two million, two billion dollars to cut off their limbs, they would say no. So they, what they have right now is worth more than the million dollars that they're trying to get. And so they spend their whole lives working, their whole lives chasing something that they think that's going to be there. And at some point they think that they're going to automatically turn the switch off and focus on doing what they really want to do. And that's not, it never happens, right? There's a reason why people die, you know, die right after they retire. Because they spent 30, 40 years of their lives on one particular thing. It was crazy. And when I heard that, when I heard that, when I heard that, um, that, ex that example, I was like, holy, I was like, damn, that made so much sense, right? 
And that's the thing, yeah, exchanging your health for wealth. You can change your health for wealth, but again, everything that you're putting into it is for a purpose. There are people who right now, right now as we sit, as I sit in this car, there are people right now in an office who've been working for 12, 16 hours a day, and they're not making that much more money than a lot of people I spent with last night. I spent a lot, I was with a lot of wealthy people last night. And, they, and they're smiling, having a great time, and they were having a great time before they got the money. That's what people got to realize. People say, well, if I had the money, no, you wouldn't. That's the reason why you don't have the money, because you think that mindset changes. It's the same mindset you had when you got the money as, as you'll have when you don't have the money. Exact same thing. And so you got to understand it. you got to understand that that's how basically it works. you got to focus on the things that are important. And your mindset will, when your mindset shifts to a place of, a place of, of strength and positivity and growth, it continues to be that way. So at some point in time, when you've made your millions, you know what ends up happening? You look back and say, I did it. That's all you will do. People think like a million dollars is a thing that when you hit, you're going to be doing jumping jacks and running around in circles. You won't. There are people who are making billions of dollars today, just today, one day today, and you, you don't even, you've never heard of them. So what does it matter? Right? And there are people like, when you make whatever that, whatever that plateau is, you will literally look back and be like, I did it. And that's all you'll say. And you'll say, okay, what's next? That's what the human brain, that's the human condition, that's what we are. And again, part of the thing is I shared this yesterday in yesterday's scope is the journey. Who you become is what matters more than anything else. Why? If someone came and picked you up and put you on the top of Mount Everest, you would not appreciate it in the same way as if you had to climb that damn mountain with a Sherpa and a bunch of stuff on your back. You hear what I'm saying? So... It's not that easy. When somebody comes and gives you a bunch of money, you don't realize the, 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 the amount that it took to get it. If someone comes and gives you the ability to go on Mount Everest, you don't realize the, the, the work that, it, that was required to get it. If you don't, if you don't understand the process, and because it's part of your prize, if you do not understand that piece, you will never understand what it took to get there. And therefore, you will not have the reference experience to apply that same, that same ability to other endeavors. So, so often you'll see people who become wealthy quickly. You see people who, who become athletes and they become millionaires. And we're all talking about it. they didn't have the right people around them. No, they didn't have the right mindset. Plain and simple. There are people who are doing more with less. So when you meet an athlete who's doing 100 million, whatever, whatever, and they go broke, it's because they didn't have the proper mindset. Somebody took that athlete and put them on the top of Mount Everest. And their character wasn't in a place that the talent was able to keep them at. Does that make sense? And so you got to understand it. Part of this process you're going through right now is what you need to go through in order to get to that place. When you look back, perspective is there. When you look back, you can share your message. When you look back, you understand why it took so long and why it was so hard to get to where you need to go. So take a look in the mirror and ask yourself a simple question. Am I doing everything I can do in order to make my life the way I want it to be? Plain and simple. If you're not, you know what you need to do. Look in the mirror. Stop looking out the window. Everyone else on Facebook, media, Syrian refugees, they're looking out the window. A lot of cats need to look in the mirror and say, what do I need to do? What can I do? Not why, but what? Why? Why will sink you? Why won't help you get anywhere? So anyways, I love you guys. Thanks so much for being in here in the scope. I appreciate you guys sharing it. Thank you so much, Beth Hoover. Thank you for sm uh, the smart chick for sharing. Joey Giggles. I appreciate you guys being in here. You guys are phenomenal. Hairstylist MDD. You got it. You got it. Stephanie, good to see you, Stephanie. Um, um, yep, look in the mirror. Hey, Phoebe Lakes, good to see you as well. Thanks, Stephanie, for being in here and supporting. I really appreciate it. You guys are phenomenal. Thanks for the shares. Thebomb.com. Kim, Kim is for now. Tiffany, yes. Thank you, Tiffany. Uh, Kim, follow Kim as well. She does uh, scopes on motivation, but also um, I've seen her transition. It's been great. She's from idea to execution. Phenomenal. So follow Kim Spire, Kim Spired. Um, she literally is, uh, she does scopes on, uh, motivation. Uh, she does scopes on, um, um, health and wellness as well. So different products about health and wellness, stuff for your face, stuff for your brain. It's for now. So follow her to learn more about that stuff. Uh, you can also follow Sweet and Low. Uh, she's on here as well. Sweet and Low, um, she does scopes on, uh, masculine and feminine, feminine polarity, uh, how people interact and com uh, work, work together. Um, the, the synergies of life, synergies of experience of people together. So, uh, follow, follow these amazing people. You can learn a lot. Again, for me, there's the emojis, there's the hearts, follow her. For me, it's about the content. For me, it's about finding people who are doing things that I want to learn from. I'm always willing to learn. I brought a notebook to this, this dinner last night. No one, I, I brought a notebook. Why? I can write, I was writing down nuggets. I was talking to people who were worth millions and millions of dollars giving me nuggets of information. I didn't have to buy a book. 
The people who wrote books were telling me things. You see what I'm saying? The mindset has to be there. A poverty mindset, a person would go to a place like that and start asking for money. Instead, I went there asking for knowledge. Plain and simple. When you ask for knowledge and you have the ability to apply it, your life will change. My life changed. I met the guy. I started writing all the time. And I met the guy who gave me the inspiration, right, um, um, to, to, to give me the inspiration to, uh, uh, to start carrying around a notebook. And I, said, I ran into him again. That's the guy. And we're going to do lunch in the next couple of weeks. So, I mean, it's phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal stuff. All right. Thank you, guys. I